Alright, I think I'm recording. Let's better check. Oh, it's got a little red dot, so it seems to be recording. Uh, all kinds of failures at different things, so <laughs> one has to be cautious. Uh, it doesn't guarantee that all this will be for naught, because everything's just been buggy lately. So anyway, we'll do some comments and then do some explaining. Um, let's see, the subjects will be uh, touched on subjects. <coughs> um, what will they be? Uh, well, you'll see when we get to it. Yeah, that's how we'll leave it. All right, <laughs> who, who pissed on this little bitch's flux capacitor? So that's from Samad. Uh, Pestadilly, Pistadilly, Pistilly. Anyway, um, little bitches. Um, again, you're, this whole electric universe seems to be the fluffy, you know, kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, fruity uh, theory. So, you know, um, the electrical, you know, discharge pretty, pretty, um, completely unevidenced nonsense, you know. So, yeah, whatever. You're an idiot. So, I mean, it's a comment on one of the Electric Universe videos. <clears throat> the one thing my scientific ma mind can't stand, so again, you know, he's got this whatever idiot face he's making for his icon, is pretentious bullshit that comes from fucking losers that act like they know everything yet are obviously just communists. So, I don't know, what, what the hell would that have to do with anything? Um, and clearly, the Electric Universe, if you want to talk about communists, you know, they sound a little bit, you know, um, we're, we're going to make that, you know, we'll use electricity to make humanity and, and the world a better place and all kinds of shared resources and stuff. It all sounds very uh, Unitarian, <laughs> you know, uh, in a religious sense. So anyway, fuck you. Uh, let's see, are you still at your same house, Gary? Well, I think it's kind of obvious in the background, but anyway. Yeah, another two months and that'll be it, probably. Uh, so, but whatever. I mean, it's just shit lately. Probably a deletable comment, just because it's really not relevant, I suppose. Uh, Robert Ritchie, at 35, hooray. Well, anyway, I'm not redoing, I'm not rewatching the video, so Einstein. As the plates get closer, the field gets stronger. Well, that's sort of wrong, so maybe we'll draw that. Um, because this came up. I don't know where Hoffler they brought up the Kashmir effect. So I'll just go through this real quick. Well, we'll go through it a little bit. Um, so the idea is, is you take two neutral plates and you move them into proximity to each other. And who the hell fuck stole my pens? Oh, God damn it. It's always mischief, mischief, mischief. I don't think this one works. Well, it's working good enough, I suppose. All right, so you take two plates that are neutral and you put them next to each other. Now the idea would be, I'll just draw a crude idea of two surfaces. And what's going to happen, basically, is, as most people would understand, the atoms are basically electrons and protons. Okay, so I'll just write them as a as a generic little line of protons, let's say, and we'll just make electrons little minus signs. And so the idea would be is that the electrons are repulsive and they're going to be on the surfaces. And atoms aren't going to combine that way. You can't combine. When the atoms combine, they obviously are, they tend, <laughs> okay, to try to stagger the electron and proton strength um, to make it possible for them to coexist. So you know, you always have electrons, you always have a proton between the electrons and you always have an electron between the protons, that kind of idea. To make the whole thing fit together better. So what's going to happen is, is one of these surfaces all right, is going to be a little bit more negative than the other and basically it will go electron strong, all right, and the other surface will tend to go uh, proton strong. So the, so the protons on one side will tend to start moving towards the surface on one plate and <coughs> the opposite will happen on the other plate that will go electron strong. So electrons will stay um, 
will become more prominent on the surface. And as that happens, obviously if the plates are close together, at any distance really, not any distance, they have to be close enough for, for this effect to take place. So they have to be very close in the sense that the, the repulsion between the electrons has to start irritating the system to turn the atoms. You can think of it as turning them. One side will the atoms will turn, the other side they they'll <laughs> one side they'll turn, you know, the electron in and the other side will turn the electron out kind of idea. Um, and as they do that, that's going to create attraction between the two plates. And and so in a sense as they move closer together, the force gets weaker because it's being used. It's like voltage. So it, the, the, the actual voltage between the two plates will decline because they're becoming more and more comfortable with the position they're in and they'll basically just move together. So if you push them apart then you're creating voltage. If you allow them to move together or you push them together then you're um, you're aiding the process that's already taking place. Yeah, so I don't know how to say that. You're not putting you're not doing work. You would only be doing work by trying to pull them apart because they are attracted. And uh, the closer they are, obviously the more attracted they're going to be in the sense that the more important it's going to be to have the two sides, one side going as positive as possible and one side go as negative as possible. And it's just kind of arbitrary which side goes which because one side started a little bit more positive or a little bit more negative than the other and that decided it so whatever whatever you brought to the interaction the players figured out and they figured out through induction like all these processes gravity magnets all of them happen through induction that is one as I've pointed out like with gravity one thing moves that movement is felt by the other thing in the sense it's an absorption of force that would have hit him he doesn't get hit he moves when he moves, he absorbs force that wouldn't hit the other guy, so it just feeds on itself. Same thing happens between the two plates. All right. I think that's a good enough quick explanation. Uh, all right. Um, you don't need the math. Just draw a top-down view of the plate field lines. So again, just <laughs> doesn't mean anything. Um, you will see a convex lens pattern. No, you won't. Um, it's perfectly even force between the two plates. It is not the cashmere effect alone. Yeah, it is. At 52, I agree, Gary, it is the slit. Okay, well, whatever. Again, time codes and comments are, in my opinion, uh, not very practical. Just because you can't create a mathematical model of an imagined thing, does not make it real. Um, yeah, you can mathematically cons you could mathematically construct a path that is uh, a pretend path in a pretend field of gravity and a pretend blah blah blah. So yes, of course. Some common sense people, please keep up the good work. Keep up your work, Gary, and explain it for people who have no background in physics in simple language, briefly. Cheers. Yeah, well, you can't be too brief because it is physics. So Tyler, who's you know, I, I don't really don't need any more crazy in my life. Thanks. I dedicate this song to I don't know, Crippler, the African baby sent to you, and Robert to adopt together. So I don't know what that. Please, I just I just don't need the wacky crap. No, it's not deleting. <sighs> I have to reload the page just to delete a stupid comment. I guess so. Now that's ray tracing stuff. We did that a long time ago. I thought. Alright, here we go. Um, Alright. Hi, Gary. Firstly, I'd like you to apologize if I offended you by making this video. Oh, this is the Steve Scully guy. No, I'm, I'm just saying there's no point. I mean, if, you, I, you know, if you're watching a video where um, you, know, you really can't 
watch a physics video cold. I mean, it's really just doesn't make much sense. You know, unless you already know what the guy's going to say or something. I don't know. It just doesn't make that much sense. Um, it was not my intention. Uh, if you would like me to take it down, let me know. No, I'm not never ask anybody to take it. It's your video. I'm just saying that. I mean, it speaks for itself. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> you know, whether you think you've made a good argument or not is up to you. Uh, to respond to your questions, the reasons I talk about particles moving faster than light is because they are as abundant compared to photons as photons are compared to black holes. Well, I don't even know what that means. And more so across deeper and deeper layers of ether. Well, you keep saying things that I, I'm just saying, what the fuck's the point of it? You're just telling me stories. Well, the rabbits jump up and then the, you know, dragons eat them and then they spit them out and the hobgoblins take the little fur bits and they make uh, little pretty pictures on the wall. I mean, you're just telling a fucking story. How does it connect to a piece of evidence somewhere, please? Connect something you're talking about to a piece of evidence. Or, or I'm just saying, why are you just telling me, why are you telling me these fables for? I brought these up specifically because they are the mechanism by which large-scale observation of what we call gravity is caused. Well, says you, without anything I should base it on, and not a single rational bit of evidence or anything. Um, that is why it matters. It matters to you. And their speed is faster and faster the smaller they are. Says you, approaching an infinite velocity. Says you and their abundance is more and more so their overall effect ultimately arrives in essentially instantaneous effect of gravity. Well you say it's instantaneous, there's no way, show, show me the evidence of an instantaneous gravity. You've, de you've decided it, it's instantaneous, well now prove it. There are several reasons to maintain Newtonian instantane. Again, Newton didn't believe in instantaneous gravity. He didn't. He didn't answer the question. He, he wasn't a presumptuous asshole. He didn't know what speed gravity moved at. And he clearly pointed out that whatever the mechanism is, it's clearly not spooky action. It's not action at a distance for no reason. He said there's a reason. There's a mechanism. Versus that of light speed, <coughs> speed of light. So I, again, it's. In fact, the speed of light was literally first recognized by observing discrepancies in the orbit of Saturn's moons from calculations made by Newtonian physics, as discussed by Richard Feynman here. Yeah, exactly. So, so what's your fucking point? The point is, is it was found that gravity works better. The equations work better if you include the speed of light. Shit, as being the speed of gravity. Uh, as he says, when the law is right, it can be used to find another one. That by having confidence in the law... I already read the Richard Feynman thing. I really don't need to do it again. Um, any evidence to suggest it is not instantaneous is indirect at best. You think Richard Feynman thought the speed of... Uh, you thought that thought gravity was instantaneous? Then you're an idiot. Because Richard Feynman didn't believe that. Whereas <laughs> light is distinctly known to not be instantaneous because <laughs> instantaneous, which is literally finds its origin in the theory that describes gravity as instantaneous. Uh, whatever. You keep talking around in circles. The fact is, Newton's gravity, as, Newton, as Einstein demonstrated, Newton's gravity model worked. Um, 40, uh, there, there was a little bit of discrepancy in Newton, a little tiny bit of imprecision. And he got half, got rid of half that imprecision in Mercury's orbit specifically by just including the speed of light as the speed of gravity. <coughs> so, you know, anyway. Regarding magnetic fields, here's a link to, for example, a paper I wrote, uh, how interesting, on how gravity causes magnetic fields by causing physical flow. Uh, yeah, well, what? You wrote an article of what, based on what experiment? If there's no experiment, there's no point. Uh, this is one of the reasons why the universe being infinite matters. Well, you keep saying so. It doesn't matter at all. We do detect the presence of infinite nature in the universe in physics, says you. But we call these de detections gravity. It's just such crap. And electromagnetism, rather than recognizing it to be resultant from the infinite nature of the universe. I, I don't know, infinite nature, like it matters. 
it, it couldn't possibly make a goddamn difference because the, the, the separations between whatever your other universe is has to be so 10 to the minus, you know, 643 um, kind of departure. It has to be so much smaller um, that it couldn't possibly make any difference. 10 trillion years, uh, you know, uh, every every action that takes a second in our universe is 10 trillion years in theirs. So what's the difference? This is the link to the paper where they first discovered that the speed of light traveling through a magnetic field depends on the direction of travel of the light. What a pile of crap! So let's go find this. This has got to be a biggest piece of steaming shit. It's no fucking paper in what? The Wacky Society? How Archives. First observation of magnetoelectric directional entropy in a gas. Yeah, whatever. It's complete bullshit. Uh, HAL is the multi basement open source archive for deposit and dissemination of scientific docu research documents. Yeah, right. A bunch of documents that um, could be any kind of pus. Alright, we report the first observation of. I don't know, anisotropy of the velocity of light introduced in a gas by electric and magnetic fields. This bilinear magnetoelectric, uh, see that just such crap all the language, magnetoelectro-optical phenomenon appears in the presence of crossed electric and magnetic fields perpendicular to the light wave vector, like there is such a thing as a reflective index difference between two counter-propagating directions. What a pile of fucking Ken Wheeler drivel. Using a high finesse ring cavity, whatever the fuck that is, we, we have measured the magnetoelectric directional whatever of molecular nitrogen. Oh yeah, like these guys could find any of that. At ambient temperature and atmospheric pressure. Not sure you did any of this stuff. Um, our measurement opens the way to deeper insight into light matter interaction. What a pile of crap. All right, so I don't know if we're going to actually see any experiment in here. Oh, look at this charming device. Oh, a bunch of mirrors again. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm sure this is a pile of shit as a device. A scheme of our experimental setup. Let's see. It represented the red arrows indicating the propagation direction, the frequency stabilization, the blue measurement signal, oh, yeah, whatever. Pile of crap. Anyway. Alright. Published in the non-juried magazine. Alright. Um, this is linked to the paper where they first discovered the speed of light. Okay, so that's the crappy paper. Uh, this video was reactionary in nature, not intended to, as a full analysis, complete with references, and so on, as these are linked throughout my work and described in much detail in other places, for example, my website. Well, as I, look, as I've already pointed out, it's fine. You can make a critique of my, my um, um, theory, but I think it was shallow and um, almost moronic in the sense that, you, you know, <laughs> you, you, you sit there. You didn't. It's a 15-minute video, um, and it's and it was intended to be uh, the crudest of outlines. Now, clearly, I've made a ton of other videos, um, and again, you didn't refute how my theory doesn't work. You just kept telling me what your theory is. See, all I have to do is fit the evidence. That's my only obligation: is to fit the evidence better than the conventional theory. My obligation isn't to debunk your ether crap or your swirly shit and all that kind of crap. That's not my job. I don't get anything for that, <laughs> okay? But I don't mind doing it. So I mean, unfortunately, your videos aren't as easy to, you know, go just oh, there's the one. So, but I'll, I'll go do some more looking around um, for. Um, your outline video, and then I'll go rip that uh, a new asshole. Uh, just as a um, uh, do unto others as they do unto you. I uh, think, but fine, whatever. Uh, I mean, no hard feelings. I'm just saying I'm obviously totally uninterested in your theory. I mean, it's just a plain statement, okay? I'm totally uninterested because mine works just fine. 
So unless you can bring some kind of evidence where mine fails to be correct, and again, you have to have evidence. You can't tell me, oh, no, there's stuff moving faster than the speed of light. You can't just say it. you got to prove it. I don't think you're able to do that. All right. So anyway. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for the comment reading. Uh, so the, the Piro and D. Hilster guy did have their little uh, talk, and it was two really boring hours. I mean, I already, you know, I already heard all the D. Hilster stuff before, so there's nothing new there. And um, yeah, they just didn't. And there was no physics really in it, <laughs> so it just wasn't a very interesting two hours. Um, Uh, Beyond Piro kind of somehow thinks this the the Jeff Yi theory, you know, with the the it's basically the jellyfish theory. The guy who thinks that all the energy comes from inside some little to whatever, like a little tiny neutroni thing or something, and it's vibrating, and that is where all the other movement comes from is the vibrations created by the little jellyfish. Just, yeah, no, it's, it can't come from the inside out. You just, you're not going to make, I mean, the dominant force is gravity, and that's outside in, not, you know, it's not a repulsive force, so, just ain't going to work, the inside out thing. No chance, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I guess that's enough of that. Sorry, I probably shouldn't do this video, because I am a bit tired. Really bad day. Anyway, but I'm here, so I'm going to do it. Um, all right, so some other subjects I thought of, just want to make clarifications on. Um, so the, the subject of mass and photons having mass. So, so I wanted to talk to the, you know, the Robert Ritchie guy, just because he was insisting they don't have mass and all this crap. And it's, I, I just think that's so wrong-headed. Um, you know, as a concept, I just I don't see how you can make anything work that way. Um, so the idea would be, is, you know, as I've sort of pointed out before, you know, if you took something and it was just in space and it wasn't moving, just sitting here, in a way, it doesn't have any mass, right? If I put a scale here, it's not going to do anything. I put a scale here, a scale here, a scale here. It has no weight. So it's not until it's actually moving, okay, that I can measure its weight. Just like with gravity, it's not until you're in gravity that scales work. Scales can't work, you know, even traditional scales, you know, whatever, you know, pivots and little, you know, baskets. Yeah, you know, the scale just ain't going to work until there's gravity to do the measuring, you know, the weighing for you. Let me get this to be the right angle here. Let's see, it goes straight right about there. Okay. Uh, yeah, that line doesn't look straight, though. No, it doesn't look right. Okay, well, anyway, we'll just deal with it. Um, and so what I've sort of said years ago with this whole school of fish argument, that it, it, does, it does make it visible in a lot of ways, but you can sort of understand that if you understand that the, the matter and the energy, all of it, it's just fish, okay? These are little energy bits, and matter would be a, a little clump of the energy bits. And the truth is, is it really only has mass in the direction of the fish. So, you know, if you have two fish going this way and then you have two fish going the opposite way, obviously those, that, that'll add up to no mass, you know, because the, the fish will cancel out. So even though you really do have fish and you have force, eh, you know, but in a sense, you could understand that there is force it's just that it's only intermittent force. That is, at any one moment you can have force in this direction, but the next moment you'll have force in this direction. You know, the two things will yin and yang. So at any one moment, though, there is kind of a force pushing this way, and there's a force pushing this way, and they just happen to balance out so you don't ever get anywhere. But you could see that as being something that would cause something to jiggle. Uh, jiggle. Right? So it's not really going anywhere, but 
if there was a scale here, the scale would say, oh, 100 pounds, zero, 100 pounds, zero, 100 pounds, zero, right? The scale over here, 100 pounds, zero, 100 pounds, zero. So in a sense, a jiggle is your mass. But anyway, that's not, you know, I wanted to make the, the deeper argument that um, force, you can kind of see it that it has mass because when you gain force, that is when you start imbalancing what you possess as force, uh, see, and that's where it's starting. So as soon as I say you start, <laughs> you know, that's this. Is, we're, then we're back to sort of the boat argument. You know that you're, this is really about boats, and there's you know a certain number of seats in the boat, and the paddlers are the force. And so, if you've been affected by a, a great deal of force, then all your paddlers are paddling in one direction, and you're, that's the direction your boat's going to go in, because all your paddlers are going that way and that's the pretty much the way it really works but the idea would be is is just to understand that if you have mass in a direction um, I mean velocity in a direction you have mass in that direction so you can see the that this 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 direct relationship between the velocity the force you've trapped you know that is a bunch of force came in and you trapped it you know it came in you trapped it came in, you trapped it, these little circles, you know, so the, the, you trapped its momentum in this direction, and it's still there, and you have more mass in this direction, so if you hit something this way, they'll say, gee, you weighed a lot, so the bullet weighs a lot in the direction it's heading, right, so when it hits me, it's like it hits me, <laughs> it's like it weighs 10,000 pounds. And it just, it's like it weighs 100,000 pounds. It just goes through me like butter. Like it, it, like it, it weighs 100,000 pounds. That's how it actually acts. So it's essentially the same thing. Velocity is the mass. It's a representation. It's giving you some indication of the amount of mass in balance the thing has. Now it's not really telling you the total mass. It's just telling you what the imbalance mass is. That's the result of the velocity. So it's not telling you how many, how much um, trapped energy is inside the thing. It's just telling you how much of an imbalance there is in these the, the, the one dimension that you're weighing. You can only weigh one dimension at a time. You know, up, down, forward, back, left, right. Um, so anyway, so I, I'm just saying I, I, I'd helped I'd have a better visual to, to state it with, but it's just a conversion. You're just, you're just trapping force in a direction, capturing it in a direction. And when you capture a bunch of fish going in one direction, they have mass because collectively they will create a huge amount of pressure um, in that direction. And the bullet will seem like it doesn't have, you know, in the sideways direction, it doesn't seem to have any mass at all. If I put a scale next to the bullet whizzing by, the scale is going to say it doesn't weigh anything. And it certainly doesn't weigh anything going this way. You know. Um, so I'm just saying that mass is fundamentally only revealed in the circumstance of when you're being affected by a force that's going to be changing you and the faster the force can change you um, that is the less the less force it takes to change you is an indication of how much how many traps you have so how how much energy you can possess in a direction so in a sense the feather and the lead ball are just demonstrating that the feather can't be affected very much. There can't be a very large differential because it doesn't have enough atoms to trap enough energy to move any faster. It's too low a density. Where the lead ball can trap a lot of force and have a lot of imbalance. And therefore, when it hits something, there's going to be a lot of energy released. Where the feather, regardless of whether it falls at the same speed or not, it has no impact because it just couldn't trap enough of the force. And it didn't take much force to get it to change its direction. Okay, that's yeah. And then, not, not a perfect way of saying it. 
and it's, uh, it should be said more perfect. Um, more mass in the direction they are moving. So it's just a key concept that the your mass is pretty much directional. The bullet has potentially a tremendous amount of mass if you count the force. Because once you put that ton of force into it and create that huge balance in all of its atomic structure, it will have a huge disproportion in terms of energy moving one way versus energy moving in the opposite direction. And that would be a, that would have been the neutral state. And the, the amount of mass is, is pretty much just the same thing as imagining a planet where the gravity was so strong that, you know, uh, <laughs> you know that yeah I'm trying to think of what distance you'd have to drop the bullet for it to be going this fast but um, I mean clearly even in our gravity you can get a bullet up to a pretty fast speed just going a few hundred feet up um, because you're doing the acceleration every second uh, you're adding more and more velocity uh, so how's the way to say that so anyway, you're, all you're doing is gaining the force, or your force in balance, and clearly at that converts into an, a notion of mass in terms of the amount of energy you impose on something. So I don't think you can separate mass from force. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying. The, the 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 word we need is something like atomic weight. You know, just to say. Okay, but the atomic weight pr provides one limiting factor, because if your atomic weight is too low, that is, you're not made of enough atoms, um, then you're not going to be able to absorb enough energy to ever gain uh, enough velocity to create an effect. Yeah, it's still just how big the boats, I mean, how many boats you have will decide how many rowers you can capture, how many you can convert. Yeah, that's probably a better way to try to say it. So anyway, so yeah, so we're left a little bit ambiguous between this idea of weight, um, practical mass, and then atomic mass. So I'd argue practical mass is the fact that you can you can put a lot of a mass differential inside of a bullet. <coughs> And it certainly has an awful lot of mass in the direction it's traveling. And that's just a fact. All right. Now, imperfectly put. All right. Um, only... Jesus. I have to learn how to write better notes. Only have blank in direction you are... All right. So that's basically the same subject. So the direction of your momentum, your velocity, the net imbalance in forces you possess will reveal itself as a kind of mass. But it's not a measurement like gravity. Gravity is basically a measurement of mass because it's an equal amount of force and it basically um, will reveal what your density is based on how much um, weight you can convert so how much how much weight you can create and so, so when you're creating weight you're really creating mass in a direction uh, force in a direction yeah so in that sense gravity allows you to weigh mass way uh, yeah, see it's still it's not your mass it's your ability to convert to convert mass into momentum uh, well anyway all right still need some work I guess uh, and the, the work I mean in just my way of putting it I'm just not putting it right <laughs> so. I'll have to put it better. I just want to get across the idea that the force is um, 
has to have mass because it creates momentum and the momentum is revealed as weight but you can only have weight if you have a density of mass of atoms something like that anyway all right till the next time such a should I <laughs> should have waited till morning for this video but anyway wanted to do a test anyway. So anyway, till the next time and such.